today on X Play. The best for the Xbox. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. Did you just say that we're in seventh place? Sharpen your plasma sword. It's game time. Here we go. Sessler. Morgan Webb. Prepare to be reviewed. Prepare to be reviewed. This is X Play. They killed the god of epic poetry. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Hello and welcome to X-Play. The inexorable flow of time pulls us ever forward to new and undiscovered countries. See, once we live in innocent harmony with the world around us, then we learn to take command of our environment, to turn noble trees and mighty whales into end tables and salad bar sneeze guards. The future is again guiding us from one era to another. With the release of the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3, and the Nintendo Wii, the current generation of consoles is passing. Like in the Dark Crystal when the ancient mystics prepared to pass forever from the land of Thra. So this week we've decided to take a look back and pick the 10 best games ever released for the current gen consoles. And today, it's Xbox time. From the classic franchises to the overlooked gems, we've got the definitive list of the finest games for the X device. Thanks to evolution, most of us had the benefit of 10 fingers. That's barring farm accidents or a run in with your local Yakuza boss. Thus, the numerical conventions of a base 10 system. And not being ones to argue with the concept good enough for Blaise Pascal, we begin with the 10th best game for the Xbox. You just knew we were going to have a car racing game here, didn't you? There's more car games on the Xbox than straight to video movies on Eugene Levy's resume, but that doesn't mean Forza Motorsport is average. Far from it. And that's why it's number 10 on our countdown. It is the best Xbox racing game around. There's over 200 cars in this bad boy, and they all look sharp. Check out the Hyundai Tiburon. Looks just like the real thing. You can almost sense the manufacturer recall coming. If you've got that Xbox Live thing going on, you can race with people from all over the world with Forza Motorsport. That's what really puts this over the top. Throw in some good looking race tracks and some Black Sabbath. And you've got our number 10 game on the charts. Yo, 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 all right, let's get this party started. At number nine is a game that teaches us it's okay to terrorize innocent bystanders. It's okay to damage private property. And it's more than okay to run through the police like a hippie from the 60s. That's what Jet Set Radio Future means to me. This cell shaded trip through the world of winding and grinding takes you through the mysterious world of online skating in futuristic Tokyo. That combination just screams fun, doesn't it? And it is fun with the skating and the dancing. and just enjoying this wonderful Tokyo City unsullied by 50s era monsters. Hey, you can even tag a tank. That makes the guy from Tiananmen Square seem like a real chump, doesn't it? But more importantly, it's a great way to work off your anger after renting Eugene Levy's American Pie Band Camp. Yeah. Look, we don't condone vandalism here at X-Play. That goes against everything we represent, unless it looks as smooth as Jet Set Radio Future. <laughs> And number eight is a game that tries to help you find your center. There's nothing wrong with a little Tai Chi to start your day. This is a soothing, calming type of game. Oh, who are we kidding? It's not. It's war. It's action. It's adventure. And it's beyond good and evil. The futuristic world is in the throes of war. And when we use the word throw, you know we mean business. This Zelda-esque romp introduces you to a lady named Jade and her pals. There's a mystery in this world and Jade doesn't know who to trust. The conspiracies lie deep. Almost as deep as the conspiracy of Eugene Levy and the straight to video cartel. But really, it's all about the combat. Jade don't take no crap and will fight anything that gets in her way. That's what Jade's about. Plus, she's got a hovercraft. For that alone, it lands on our countdown. But what really puts this one over the top? The tease of woman pig relations. Yeah. Let's see, Heath Ledger pulled that one off. 
A Jet Set Radio feature was actually a reimagining of Jet Grind Radio, which of course was a game originally developed for the Sega Dreamcast. Oh, the Dreamcast. It occupies a special place in the current generation of consoles. That specialness being that it died. Yeah, but we salute you, Dreamcast, and all the screwy games you had to offer us. But as committed Darwinists, we really don't respect you that much. And speaking of failures, we should also take a moment to remember those worst games ever released for the Xbox. Worst use of traditional art form in a game. Kabuke Warriors. That must be I suck in Japanese. Kabuki Warriors looks like someone gorged on M&Ms in Whiteout and then puked into the Xbox disc tray. As you begin spiraling down the porcelain bowl of this title, you'll fight as this white glob of nothing against this fetching snot sculpture. Fighting looked more like someone put E in the retirement home's water bubbler as you blandly grope and claw at your creepy adversary. The only challenge this scatological piece of game and trash will deliver is where to bury it so no one can ever find it. After the break, seven, six, and five. And later, the very best game for the Xbox. Criminally gorgeous, it's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. Now we're counting down the 10 greatest games released over the lifespan of the Xbox. And we were cruelly interrupted by a television commercial, but it's over. So why don't we get back to the counting? Hello, I'm Special Agent Bob. And I'm Secret Agent Steve. We'd like to take a minute and thank the folks at X-Play for naming Splinter Cell Chaos Theory the best Xbox game ever. Mmm, actually guys, you came in seventh. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, did you just say that we're in seventh place? Yeah, I did. What, are you kidding me? What about the time we choked that guard? Together. Or the time we shot that other guy in the crotch? <gasps> Listen, getting seventh place is still a huge honor. We chose Chaos Theory because of its gorgeous, pretty visuals, intense multiplayer action, and another solid round of stealth-based gameplay. And yes, the game still sports that great co-op mode the series is known for. Well, I guess it's not so bad. I mean, at least we didn't get beaten up by Psychonauts. No, oh, come on. They don't even have crowd shooting in that game. Raz is totally asking for it, too. Charge! Welcome to the world of Psychonauts. This whacked out platform game may have bombed at retail, but that didn't stop us from giving it sixth place. You see, unlike so many other video games that try to be amusing, this one is genuinely funny. Ah, top of the morning to you, ma'am. And good day to you, Officer Lungfish. It doesn't hurt that the game features rock-solid run-and-jump gameplay and some very creative level design. So, is this where I get a speech and learn another lesson? Don't worry. On X-Play, we have very strict rules about learning things. Okay, that was lame. You know, if I knew they were handing out awards for being funny, I would have sent in that video of your mom. What? With Vin Diesel. You're in my cell. It may not be eligible for the Oscars, but that didn't stop us from awarding The Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay with spot number five on the list. Talking about me? Never why. Hmm. Some people just don't know how to take a compliment. You're your mission is to take charge of the main man himself and escape from a futuristic high-security prison by any means necessary. And by any means necessary, we mean kill, kill, and kill. The game is a first-person shooter, but unlike most trigger-happy action titles, you'll actually have to use your brains to survive. In fact, it's really more like an adventure game where you get to blow things up. Take that, King's Quest. Ugh, that game blows. Let's see what's on the Pokemon channel. God, that Pikachu's a total nympho. And that's it. I'm out of here. You know, no matter how many times you write them, they're never going to add a donkey Pokemon. Shot it. Catch them all, Pikachu. Catch them all. Vin Diesel always takes an interest in the officially licensed game versions of his movies. Yeah. Now, the quality really shows. If only he would take some interest in the movies themselves, because the Chronicles of Riddick, the movie, it sucked. It was like if Doom were rewritten by mildly retarded fifth graders. Mm. I was disappointed they didn't make a game version of that Mr. Nanny movie he made. I've always, 
dreamed of using a toddler as a human shield. Well, dreams are coming true today on X Play. So, audience, be sure to stick around to find out precisely what we selected as the most glorious and execrable games ever released for the Xbox. Worst use of positive African American role models in a video game. Bad Boys Miami Takedown. They're not the best cops, they're the worst. The first moment of queeze you'll feel is from an in-game camera that acts more like an instamatic in need of a Ritalin. You can take your rage at buying this game out on all sorts of junk. Hate cheap wine? How about melons? Steal my french fry. Much like the bad boys themselves, this game has definitely shot this shark. After the break on X-Play, numbers four, three, and two. And later on, well, you get the idea. The excitement is radiating from Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. We're saying goodbye to the current gen consoles with a long, slow trek to the zenith in Xbox gaming. Let's continue with number four. Tracy Chapman has nothing on me. Because thanks to Burnout 3 Takedown, I've got a fast car. And you better believe it's fast enough to fly away. I'm not joking. Number four on our list is like Dukes of Hazard Fast. The white knuckle thrill of driving at insane speeds down a one-way street cannot be rivaled by any racing game. Gran Turismo feels like a gentle ride with grandma down a country road, compared to the adrenaline-thumping, heart-pounding nature of Burnout 3. Whether you're on a suicide run through a crowded intersection or trying to take out the producers of the Fast and Furious franchise, you'll feel like Vin Diesel after finding out the box office results for the pacifier. Amazing. If you don't feel like traveling by car, our number three on the countdown has a disco zeppelin. Oh, the humanity! It's Ninja Gaiden. Ryu is perhaps the greatest ninja ever. Even when in a field of flowers, he could kill you with a stare. He'll take out an army of ninjas on horses and do an electric high wire sliding act. I guess you could call it the electric slide. <laughs> Ryu also hangs out with breasts the size of this woman's head. I've never seen one like that before. Seriously, how big are those things? And for God's sake, what are they covered in? And why would she be wasting them on an apparently celibate ninja? It is a shame that such a sword must go untouched. Whatever the reason, it doesn't much matter, because this game is amazing. Visually stunning, amazing combat, and bosses that are scary as all hell. <laughs> Story's good too. Something about a sword. Ryu turns into a bird. These two are left to make out or something. It's just an idea for Ninja Gaiden 2. Speaking of the number two and casual lesbian activities, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic has both. While there is no outright girl on girl on alien minigames, emotions like Dagobah Swamp Water run deep. I do not know if anything will be possible or if you even return what I feel, but I do know it is there. Ah, uh, video game innuendo. KOTOR has an expansive, well-thought-out universe, allowing you to delve deep into the RPG the way George Lucas delves deep into your wallet every time he re-releases his damn movies. You hear me, Lucas? I'm not buying them again. Hold on a second. D don't be hasty. And while Knights of the Old Republic is a great game, it's not the best. It's like the old alien proverb. Yeah, you said it, buddy. You said it. KOTOR is that rare licensed game that actually feels like it's part of the mythos of the movie. It helps that the movie it was based on was good. Yeah. I seriously doubt you could create a compelling game by being really true to the story of Ice Age 2. And we here at X-Play love the truth. It's the only thing we love more than watching monkeys spoon their poop each other. Oh, so stick <laughs> around as our dedication to the truth culminates with our pick for the Alpha and Omega of Xbox games. Worst use of negative African-American role models in a video game. Crime life. Gang wars. Rarely has a game possessed so much abject suck as this cobbled-together pixelated vomitorium that dares to call itself a game. 
Prime Life has you suffering through poorly animated cutscenes, dredging the saddest excuse for a story this side of the warning label on your mouthwash. What do you want from me? Witnesses metal groups of poorly animated thugs girdle together in an incomprehensible cesspool of bad graphics. Moments away on X-Play. That's right, you mother! Run! The very best game for the Xbox. Today. What's up, player? Just chilling. I hear that. What? Huh? Uh, what? You can't fight time, but Blinks can. Meet Blinks, an unlikely hero who controls time, using powers like rewind, pause, even record. Because if he doesn't, time itself will stop. Bang. No Blinks. Blinks, rated E for everyone. The time control, there's no power greater than X. No matter what, you gonna run into me. down the very best games released for the Xbox. All we've got left is the number one game, but first, here's our pick for the most especially craptastic games on the Xbox. In third place is that pooperific fantasy launch title, Azuric, Rise of Parathia. It's terrible. And in second place, a game that proved not everything is improved by the addition of boobs. Imagine that, it's BMX Triple X. And in first place, X-Play now presents the worst game ever released for the Xbox. And now, the ultimate steaming pile of pixels. Your champion. Worst use of civilized digits in the history of appendages. Drake of the 99 Dragons. Drake is insipid. Drake is buggy. Drake has a horrific camera. Drake has an aiming system on par with a loaded sailor in the can. Drake is the apogee of suck. Even if while you were playing this game and a surgeon removed your brain, causing your body to land on the controller, you would still be playing this game and your ghost would be pissed that it was the last thing you did. The fumes that emanate from Drake's many flaws will cause blindness, birth defects, male menstruation, and paralysis. You have been warned. Mm, yes, and now, our pick for the number one super best exemplary approved of game for the Xbox. You already know what it is. Yeah, if you've watched the whole show and you have a normal brain stem function, you should be able to take a reasonably good guess at what game we haven't gotten to yet. For its fine story, for its addictive multiplayer, for its complex alien politics, we've selected the very best game on the Xbox. Here it is, Halo 2. <laughs> In peace, there's nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. <gasps> when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger. Stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood. I smell covenant! Hey, Chief. I think I speak for most when I say you'll always be more to me than just another pretty killer. That's right, you mother! Remember when we first met? There was no hint of the potential hidden within your unsociable suit. Your shielding system was a breath of healthy air when the tough got to going all over our boots. No other game character had moves like you, Chief. Your guns felt right in that jump, weightless perfection. Sure, I pointed you in the right direction, told you when to kill. You gave me much more than a girl could possibly hope for in a game. You improved my expectations on the ladder of an engaging story arc, one that generated a progressive difficulty, climaxing in the faceless, staggering difficulty of the flood. But a girl can get lonely, she, she needs more than one man can give. Is it wrong to want something a little more evolved? Halo 2 brought Master Chief and Digital 411 delivery system Cortana back to fight for Earth. Pretty much. It's up to them to save both the place where they keep their stuff and the offices of Bungie so that Halo 3 can come out. Pretty much. The title delivered the ability to play beyond our xenophobic hatred of the Covenant. What would you have your arbiter? To understand their depth by playing them, we were brought further into the story. Discovering that you should never hate anything until you know what makes it cry. Halo 2 improved commandable crafts. It created new casts of Covenant, 
and allowed you to use more of their weapons like the energy sword and the particle beam rifle. It also made the environments more vast and interactive, and gave you the ability to jump onto vehicles and take them over. Halo 2's ultimate improvement though, one that limo drives itself right into X-Play's winner circle, is its support for Xbox Live. It was far less buggy than PC servers. It had a clean interface. It always let me know when my pals were on board. From Kabul to Kennebunkport, Bahrain to Bayonne, online war waged with the ultimate victor being the game itself. There's been awkward moments in dark rooms with other games, Halo 2. Once I feathered a joystick connected to you, sticking a plasma grenade to some gamer named Frag Nut One's ass and watching him die, I'll never go back. But I will go forward. Hurry, Halo 3, wearing something special for you. A flood-killing grin. You know, Halo 2 lost me as soon as I started talking to that plant from Little Shop of Horrors, Audrey, I think it was. Yeah, you know, the more I think about it, you know, it kind of lost me when I was halfway through and it, and it ended. The last boss, that wasn't even a challenge. The last boss wasn't hard. You shoot him and then you're like, but, but, I would have thrown my controller, but it cost me $30. And I don't give a rat's ass about alien religious politics. I think gay aliens should be allowed to marry or abort whatever kind of creature they want. Yeah, I, I, I guess so. I didn't even know. I mean, there was... Was there alien sex in it that I completely missed? I don't know. It, I, it I think happened. I was too busy wondering where the ending was. It could happen. Yeah. You've been watching X-Play. We're not certain why, but we thank you. Congratulations.